Mona Abu Amara is Chief Representative for the Palestinian Delegation to Canada. She joins me now. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. You heard Minister Jolie there denouncing the demonstrations by Palestinians and Palestinian supporters in Canada. The Prime Minister has issued a statement condemning the, the protests we saw in the wake of the Hamas attacks. What's your reaction to these denunciations by the Canadian government? It's really unfortunate uh, because uh, these demonstrations are for Palestine. Um, they're not pro-Hamas demonstrations. They call for freedom and liberty and human rights of the Palestinians. And the, this issue has not uh, been facing the Palestinian community, unfortunately, in Canada. Uh, just in the recent few days, any of the, the demonstrations that used to um, happen were deemed as uh, hateful or anti-Semitic or even any demonstration which calls for the human rights and for freedom for those. What, what do you think these attacks by Hamas have done to the international view of the Palestinian cause? Listen, uh, the situation is devastating and uh, the loss of life is deplorable. Uh, the loss of one life uh, is one too many, especially when they're civilians. But uh, unfortunately, from what we're witnessing, the situation will only uh, get worse and the slippery slope will only get darker for one reason, is that we are not treating the root cause. The whole world now um, jumping in uh, on the right of Israel to defend itself, but uh, they don't look at uh, the Palestinian um, civilians who have been living under occupation for so long, decades long. And I'm sorry, but uh, we did not find any of the international community uh, standing to push Israel to implement these international laws that uh, were created to protect um, the weak, to protect those occupied. And now the rhetoric of Israel that has been putting, that it has been putting the people of Gaza under brutal siege air and sea and land for more than a decade and a half, raining bombs and committing uh, heinous war crimes for years, uh, then all under the pretext of weakening Hamas. So now this rhetoric has been proven as a scam. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, uh, compared this attack by Hamas this weekend to what ISIS does. What's your response to that? Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Um, he said he asked the Gazans to flee a place that he knows he is controlling and uh, uh, subjugating them to all forms of torture for uh, more than a decade and a half, asking them to flee where uh, if uh, not a single person even who's sick uh, could get out. So that has nothing to do with the security of Israel and we have been calling um, for the humane treatment, the treatment that any human being would deserve. Uh, I heard uh, your previous uh, guest saying that uh, this situation that's happening is uh, simply just because Israel cannot allow for stuff like this to happen to them. But would you be able to come and tell um, if Russia comes and says, uh, please uh, have uh, Ukraine be a demilitarized, uh, good occupied population, and then uh, that uh, would be the way to go. And that's the only way that we would give them the rights and uh, uh, their freedom. No double standards works in these situations. There is an occupation that ha has been uh, killing and, and terrorizing the indigenous Palestinian population for decades and decades, and it needs to end. Uh, the, the no double standard, do you condemn what Hamas did then over the, I, I know you will condemn and, and have condemned the actions of the Israeli government, but the slaughter of so many people and the kidnapping of elderly women and young children, do you condemn that? Listen, Dave, I, uh, I have been on CBC uh, for maybe three or four times in the past couple of days, mm -hmm. and I've seen, um, witnessed you having the Israeli ambassador multiple times coming, and not in one of those conversations have you asked him to condemn, if he condemns, the uh, killings of entire families, children, women, elders. When you do so, please call me back. 
and then we'll talk and answer that question. Well, I asked him about those issues earlier and how he can justify it and how he thinks the world will view it because we are about to enter what appears to be, if you listen to the words of Benjamin Netanyahu, a very aggressive response into the Gaza Strip. And we're going to see some pretty horrible images co coming out of there. Um, Justified, because the international community gave a green light to Israel to do them, to two, more than two million people who are living under siege for a decade and a half. It could be justifiable for the international community because it needs to stay uh, the steadfast ally of Israel. But instead of helping war and devastation, there needed to be a hard stand towards peace if you've just mm -hmm. uh, pushed Israel to implement international law and did not block the organs that would have is Israel pay for it, account, uh, have accountability towards all the war crimes committed in their trust. But, but, uh, look, I, I, Mr. Abu Amara, I, I appreciate there is a long and, and difficult history here, and I am not trying to minimize any of that. Um, but but I, I guess I feel like our humanity has to go in a lot of directions, right? That, that you can advocate for a better life for Palestinian civilians and also be horrified by what we've seen from Hamas and also potentially be horrified from what we're about to see uh, in the response to what Hamas has done in, in the last 48 hours, right? I, I, you I mean, are allowing the response. You are supporting the response. Listen, um, if you don't want to talk about the, uh, the standards, I want to ask you, where was the, uh, the international community and when, where was the Western um, uh, media when the pogroms happened by settlers on Palestinians? You didn't have life coverage when homes were burnt, well, kids were in them running around like crazy when, when they were shooting at cars and shooting at people. And if a Palestinian had to defend themselves, then the army would come in and do its job of terrorizing and imprisoning. You haven't mentioned that today a boy in Palestine was burnt almost to death and saved by a brave person who jumped in and took him out of the captivity. We are seeing right now in all of the West Bank, these uh, terror extensions of there's running a rampage. And what did the international community do? Support giving them thousands of M16s while they know that they will use them on stolen land on terrorized people. So yes, you can have humanity on both sides. And I started by um, saying how every life counts and mostly civilian, but justice needs to prevail and justice cannot be in, um, for some and uh, selective. In, in the wake of this, uh, Europe has announced that it's reassessing its aid. And we're seeing allies, as you've said, aligning with Israel uh, in, in terms of being justified in its response. Are, are you, how worried are you that what has happened is going to give Israel license to retaliate in full force here? Yeah, so honestly, for, uh, for years, we have been pleading with the free world to take action, to do something to not create a vacuum where we steer um, to this madness. We have been asking for the, the rights that you would ask for any human being, but instead the world would always say empty words, empty condemnations. But when it push comes to shove, even as a representative um, for, for Palestine in Canada, I sp did my part on that with the Canadian government. And to give you just one small example, all of my work is to see Canada's policy implemented because there's a lot of difference between the words said and what is happening on the ground. And policy that thinks that settlements are illegal and uh, uh, they constitute um, a war crime should not be bringing in and making these uh, settlements more viable by trading and having their products be sold in Canada. You can't have a policy that at the end of the day, the, act, the words are beautiful, but the action always stands with the occupier and the oppressor. But, but I guess just, uh, 
how do I phrase this? Uh, I, look, this is a very difficult topic to talk about, right? I'm going to be very upfront about this, and, and I'm anxious in, in even doing this interview because I don't want to appear disrespectful or insensitive to anybody uh, hurt by this. But I've watched the images of kids being taken away. We've seen the pictures of, you know, a music festival being attacked and hundreds killed. You know, it, it's... Um, this is, and for a lot of people, this is their introduction to this particular conflict in, in some ways, right? Who aren't as immersed in it That's as you problem. are. Right? But, but That's the problem, the introduction. You haven't been introducing this to people. It's not pink and dandy if it's all good in Israel. We have been, have you, have you seen the images that happened in Gaza? Yep. Look, I, I, no, you haven't seen the exact, I have three of my... Um, Colleagues, diplomats, one ambassador from Poland, another ambassador in uh, uh, in the UK, and a colleague diplomat in Saudi Arabia. Every single one of them have lost a whole line of the family. With kids, with women, with everything. No, you haven't seen the, the grizzly. It's, it's not about a competition between what ugly images you can show. It's how we get past this to bring in peace and justice. I want to just refer you to um, an article that, that was written today by an Israeli um, Jewish writer, Gedan Levy, uh, in, in Haaretz. And he said, we arrest, kill, mistreat, rob, protest settlers. Um, we protect settlers committing massacres. We shoot innocent people, gag out their eyes and smash their faces, drop them, confiscate their land, plunder them, kidnap right. them from their beds and carry out ethnic cleansing. We also continue the unreasonable seizure on Gaza and everything. But this is exactly fight. what we've seen this weekend as well, right? I mean, I, I, we, we played a tape of a Canadian mother whose son was at a festival and she listened as he died uh, on the phone. Right. So I, so, I, I mean, so uh, it, 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 this, this is the thing with, with Hamas and what what has happened as a result of what happened on Saturday. Um, you, you, I have heard you condemn what Israel has done, and I will ask the Israeli ambassador when he comes back on, I promise you, uh, how he feels about what may happen or unfold in Gaza. Not how he feels. But, not well, how sure, he feels. Sure. You didn't ask me how I feel. You did not ask me. None of you asked me how I felt about it. I told you. I right. deplore every loss of life. You don't want that answer. You only want the victim to condemn themselves because that's the rhetoric that is going on. But you don't want, on the other hand, you're at least, you're doing something for um, the victims on one side. What are you doing for peace and for the victims on the other? Mona Abu Amara, I, I want to thank you for your time. I, I, I really do. I, that's Mona Abu Amara. She is the chief representative for the Palestinian delegation uh, to Canada. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Ambassador. Pleasure to welcome you to our program. I appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much for having me. I, I want to ask you in just a moment about the situation in Gaza, but first on the West Bank. I, I wondered today our foreign minister announced that there were a busload of Canadians, for example, who were able to evacuate. Have you or any of your counterparts been involved in those discussions and, and what do you attribute to facilitating them? Well, um, I think that uh, it all began with the crises, the calls to evacuate from Canada uh, when it started with Israel and uh Gaza itself, but the problems that were in Gaza complicated uh, things to another extent. So the conversation with the Jordanian side and um, with Israel facilitated that type of uh, evacuation from the West Bank. Uh, those conversations were, of course, um, supported by our um, leaders, uh, be it the president or the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But as an occupied uh, territory, we don't have any uh, rule over the border. So we would like uh, for everybody in uh, uh, under the crisis to be able to uh, get home and for all the aid to be coming in. But that's, of course, Israel's choice. So, so you have you, you are generally supportive of the idea of foreign nationals, for example, in the West Bank, be it from Canada or elsewhere, being of able course. to leave? Yeah. Of course. But, but, so it should be an open border for people to be free to travel. And that's something that the Palestinians have never had. So, yeah. On the situation in Gaza, um, if you could, and I know you're in touch with, with many people in the area right now, convey to people watching right now uh, your assessment of the humanitarian crisis there as it stands. It's a genocide. It's ethnic cleansing. We have uh, 
47 families, about 500 people who were just scraped out of the, uh, um, the record, civil record, uh, with its men, women, children, elderly, the whole families do not exist anymore. I would like people to know that our story did not start a few days ago. Our story started decades ago. Um, but unfortunately, the international community did not put emphasis on the need for justice for the Palestinians and uh, to treat the disease, but it concentrated on the symptoms. And we need actually to be able to treat the disease. We need to end the occupation and apartheid. Let me try and set par parse apart your answer there, and in particular, um, talk about the distinguishment or lack thereof, as you view it, from world leaders. And, and I imagine, you know, people like our prime minister is implicated in those, those comments from your perspective as well. What is it that you would have liked to see world leaders say in response to this, other than condemning what Hamas did? So, what I would have loved to see was prior to this taking place. Uh, for a lot of, uh, as I told you, ages, we have been trying to convey this message to every world, world leader. On my uh, behalf, I spoke to Global Affairs, of course, to, to every party that would listen. But you know, as a Palestinian, there are not a lot of venues and a lot of people who would actually give you the time to listen. Um, so uh, our concern was that there is going to be an explosion due to injustice, the grave injustice that's happening. And for us, we were hoping that the actual solution would be in the organs that have been created for that particular reason, in the peace process that has been facilitated by the international legitimacy. Now, after, uh, when you tell me what they should have done, um, two things. I, I think the the punitive uh, um, measures against the Palestinian people as a people led also to green lighting the humanitarian crisis that's happening right now. It, it gave Israel a green light to attack as it was not just um, Hamas or a, a party or had a, a special target. It is actually targeting Palestinians as a whole in Gaza and um, it happening as well with its terror extension and, and, and the occupation forces in the West Bank with uh, um, tens of Palestinians being killed since um, last week. So a lot could be done on the political side when it concerned justice um, and just uh, giving uh, the, the enough time to consider all the travesties that have been happening towards the Palestinian people. I think what I interpret from what you're saying is, and I, and I hear the point, that there could have been more attention paid by world leaders, by the media, et cetera, to, to what has happened before. But I think you're, you're also going to be aware that my respectful challenge to you is that it sounds a little bit like the, the way that you characterize what's happened in history could be used as a justification for what's unfolded. And I'm, I'm a, I'd ask you yeah. to respond to that. Yeah, I know. This this uh, point has been uh, pushed a lot by the Israeli um, narrative uh, to, to pretext to things uh, and, and just uh, deciding that the Palestinian struggle has started a few days ago and to identify it as such uh, is a travesty on its own. Uh, we have, uh, for 75 years, we have people who have been living in uh, refugee camps for 17 years in Gaza with 98% of water and undrinkable. So these situations, the unlivable situations, did not just need a little attention. It needed a, a solution. So if there is anyone who bears responsibility, it's not a justification. It's just pointing to the right direction for responsibility towards action that uh, happen on the ground. But but at the same time, you are saying it in the context of what's happened, right? And you're not saying it's all Hamas's fault, right? You're saying that there's a lot more. And, yes. and I think that would be uh, concerning to, for example, the families of the Canadians who have been killed in the, in the last 10 days or who were killed 10 days ago. Right? Yeah, we have, um, listen, um, even now, the dehumanization of Palestinians and the normalization of their torture. So is it justified to uh, murder thousands? Now we have more than a thousand of children killed. 
So who's going to uh, stand and say that that um, is an a, a justified uh, response from Israel. But nobody, towards... I don't think anybody is. Like what I have heard from world leaders, particularly in the last 48 hours, is I think Joe Biden said in that interview this weekend, it's a mistake to occupy Gaza. But you need to adhere occupation. to international We're law. We're not talking about but occupation. But even, even in this case, you need to adhere to international law. You need to not be killing civilians. Law? Don't kill Who civilians is in act of war. But That's at the same 3, time... 3,000 did... Palestinians, 60% of them uh, women and children, and you can't identify the rest as um, um, all non-civilians. So, no, it hasn't been... International law has not been um, it, applicable to the Palestinian cause since but it was... But what about the Israeli civilians? Or do they not deserve the same consideration as the Palestinian Every civilians? Every life deserves consideration. But no life has more value than the other. That's our point. You can't build the justification of murdering 3,000 people and saying that now, because international law was not followed, but at the end of the day, justifying flagrantly uh, committing a genocide towards and, the Palestinian and how, people. how do you respond to, okay, so the, we put this, right, to the Israeli representatives, and, and their response is, that Hamas, and, and this is backed up by U.S. intelligence, for example, that Hamas mm -hmm. has embedded themselves in civilian infrastructure, that Hamas was planning this for a long time and didn't make sure, for example, that Palestinian civilians in Gaza had moved away from those military infrastructures, fully knowing that Israel would respond in the way it did. What do you say to that? Those are excuses. You um, don't believe that Hamas has culpability here? That's not what I mean. I mean that when uh, um, when Israel is bombing places, it's because she knows she's targeting uh, Hamas uh, infrastructure. That's a lie. Uh, Israel is trying to hit as many targets as it can, and uh, it has been doing so prior to this uh, event. We had uh, wars uh, on different uh, in, in different years that have been aggressions towards the Palestinian people uh, in Gaza, and every time when when you are bombing uh, schools and hospitals, uh, places where people are fleeing to from the bombing itself, bombing the convoys after telling people they need to evacuate, bombing the border uh, when you're saying you want uh, the aid to come in, bombing the UNRWA storages where, where assistant uh, material is uh, uh, included. It's a way to punish the Palestinian people in general by starving them, by not providing water, fuel, and that is the travesty that the world is looking at this and green lighting What are it. they supposed to do in response then to what Hamas did to them? Are they not supposed to respond? Respond to Hamas, not to Palestinian people. But Hamas is in Gaza. It's in Gaza because for 17 years, the Israelis have been putting all of those 2.3 million people half of them children in this open air prison and treating them with no humanity. People who were dying because they can't get health care outside and the world has forgotten about them. They don't look at them because it's Palestinians who have been tortured. And that's the normalization and dehumanization that I have been talking to you and, about. And, 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 I, and I'm not in any way by putting these questions to you trying to negate that. But can two things be true? Can it be true that there not have been enough value placed on those lives and that there should be more. And at the same time, there be just as much value placed on the innocent Israelis who were killed last week and, and there be required some sort of response to what happened. Wouldn't but anyone in that it, position want to defend themselves? Is, is, is the giving more value to the Israeli civilian life by murdering 3,000 Palestinians, 60% of them women and children? Does that bring value? That's the issue. When it's Palestinian casualty, it does not count. And we need to go back to the root problem, to the oppression, to the tyranny, to the occupation, to the um, apartheid, and fix the root problem so people are not basing but their well-being on someone else's demise. But that isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And in the meantime, this act was, of terrorism was committed. And I don't understand how the Israelis are supposed to just not do anything. It, you're saying not do anything versus commit ethnic cleansing and genocide. That's I don't too, think it's binary. I, I, I understand that that's, that, that, that that's your positioning it. But 
to say that there is no Hamas, even though you see that Hamas's rise has been justified, that's the way you describe it to me, they still exist in Gaza. Is Israel just supposed to let them I'm not go? justifying anything for anyone. I'm telling you that the Palestinian people have been under oppression for decades. So to come and put a blame just simply on the Palestinian people is not actually factual. It's just to condemn the victim themselves so you would green light more travesties happening towards them by Israel, the occupying power, which does not want a solution that would bring justice for the Palestinian people. It wants them to be good occupied and die uh, silently away from the public eye and to be able to keep on its travesties against them. Okay, Ambassador, I appreciate you making the time for this discussion. I'm out of time. I have to leave it there. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.